welcome back to another Aussie Med Shoot. Today I'm going to be telling you a bit about iron metabolism. Now remember, if you like these videos, be sure to hit subscribe or to hit the like button. If you've got recommendations or requests, make sure to leave a comment. To start off with, there are three different sources of nutritional iron. You can get iron in salts, you can get iron in heme, which is from meat, or you can get iron in ferritin. Now, the way that these are absorbed is all different, but once you get free iron in your epithelial cells, the process from then on is the same. First off, talking about iron salts. Now, when you ingest ferric iron as a salt, it goes into the gut, and in the duodenum, it's turned into ferrous iron by duodenal cytochrome B, a protein. The ferrous iron then enters the gut epithelium via the transporter protein DMT1. Boom, you've now got some free iron in your epithelial cells. Next on to heme. If you eat meat, the heme groups will enter your gut and be transported across the epithelial membrane by a protein called HCP1. Next, the enzyme HO1 is responsible for removing ferrous iron from the heme group. Boom! Again, you've got free iron in your epithelial cells. The third nutritional source of iron is ferritin. Ferritin is probably the easiest to remember because we don't really know how it's transported across into epithelial cells. There's an unknown transporter. Once it gets in, iron is freed from it and you've got free iron in your epithelial cells. Now what? So you've got free iron in your epithelial cells. It can either go to mitochondria, be stored as ferritin, or it can be exported into the blood, so the other side of the epithelial cell, via a protein called ferroportin. If iron does get transported out through ferroportin, it is next oxidized back to ferric iron by hephaestin. Once oxidized, it can then bind to another protein called transferrin for transfer through the blood. Now, transferrin is called apotransferrin before it has iron atoms, and after it's got them bound, it's called diferic transferrin. The reason for di, meaning two, at the start of that name, is because it binds two iron atoms at a time. Now, there is a fourth way of getting iron in our bodies, but it's not a nutritional source. It's basically recycling. When your red blood cells get to the end of their life cycle, which is about 120 days, they can be eaten by macrophages. Once eaten by macrophages, the protein hemoglobin in the red blood cell, which contains iron, can be broken down and the iron atom is freed as ferrous iron. This ferrous iron is then exported by our old friend ferroportin out into the blood. Now once the ferrous iron is in the blood, it gets oxidized by a different protein this time, ceruloplasmin. Once oxidized, it can bind to transferrin, the same as nutritional sources of iron. The whole point of diferic transferrin is to transport iron around the body so that the cells that need iron can get it. So how do cells get iron off of these proteins? Well, I'm glad you asked. Boop. You've got your cell, and on the membrane of that cell is a receptor. Can you guess the name? It's a transferrin receptor. The transferrin receptor is able to bind two diferic transferrins. Once they bind, this is endocytosed. The endosome has another three proteins in its membrane that are important. The first protein is a proton pump. This pumps hydrogen protons into the endosome, which allows it to become acidified and the transferrin proteins to release their ferric iron. Next is the steep 3 protein, which puts electrons into the endosome, thereby reducing ferric iron back down to ferrous iron again. This gets confusing, so make sure to keep track of ferrous and ferric ions. Once you have ferric ions, they're able to be transported out by our old friend, the DMT1 transporter protein, into the cytoplasm of the cell. The iron is then in a theoretical pool within the cell, which can be used to supply mitochondria, cellular processes, it can be stored as ferritin, or it can be exported back out through ferroportin again. How is this system regulated though? Because you don't want too high iron in your body. This system is primarily regulated by hepatocytes, the cells of the liver. These cells have three receptors on their membrane for sensing iron levels in the blood. These are HFE slash transferrin receptor 1, HJV and transferrin receptor 2. If the iron levels are sensed as being too high, the hepatocytes will release hepcidin into the blood. This will go to epithelial cells in the gut and also to macrophages and block ferroportin proteins, thereby preventing iron from entering the blood from all sources. So that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed that, please make sure to give me a thumbs up or subscribe. If you've got some requests or recommendations, please feel free to leave a comment. Until next time. Sunshine